What's going on guys? Still got back again. Hope you're fantastic today and welcome back to another Fazbear Fright Summary. Today we are doing the next story in the cliffs, which is the breaking wheel, okay? The breaking wheel was the longest story out of the three uh, because I can just see in the divide of the pages, the second one's the biggest. The breaking wheel. And... Fun fact, guys, this was actually going to be the first story of this book. Uh, and the cliffs was going to be the second one. But the breaking wheel was going to be the cover. Uh, the breaking wheel with the cover, right? Of, of what's happening in the story. And a lot of people believe that it was changed because of how gruesome and horrible the story is. Okay? So because it was too gruesome... Uh, they changed it to the cliffs. But yes, I can confirm, guys, that the breaking wheel is very, very dark and very, very gruesome and very, very gory. So just a warning beforehand, guys, it's pretty brutal later on in the story. Basically, think of Springtrap and a Springlock failure, but not the way you think, okay? Uh, and imagine all that happening and in great detail. Yeah. That's basically it. That's the breaking wheel. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed this story, guys. I liked it more than the cliffs. Uh, I'd give this like a 9 out of 10. I really enjoyed it, actually. Uh, and I love the ending. The ending's very cool and very creepy. And when I was reading through the story right at the end, again, I love stories where you can read through and it goes through your head and you, and you imagine things happening. And uh, I got some really cool scenery in these, this, some of the parts in this story. So yeah, let's get straight into it, guys. Let me get my notes. Uh, before I start as well, the next story is he told me everything. And apparently that's got mixed reviews, so that's going to be interesting. <laughs> okay, so the breaking wheel. So even before this uh, book came out, people Googled the, the breaking wheel. And it was basically like this torture... Uh, this torture method that people used uh, in the past, in the past of history. If you didn't know, guys, humans were very, very brutal in the past. Very, very brutal. Barbaric uh, tortures, beheadings, stuff like that, you know. Uh, check out, if you guys haven't done English history, you need to check out the UK and its history. The UK has, like, thousands of years of history. And it goes pretty crazy, like with the med medieval times. It's it's pretty dark, so yeah. Okay, so the main character of this story is Reed, okay? And Reed is in a robotics class, okay? He's in a class with robotics. How cool is that? So everybody in the class is making their own robots, big and small, little dogs, little cats, um, human-sized models, exoskeletons as well. Exo exoskeletons where you go into the suit uh, and you can move around in it and, you know, you can do some cool stuff with it, right? And there is a bully in the class called Julius, okay? Uh, they're all freshmen, by the way, so they're all pretty older. They're not kids anymore. Uh, Julius is the bully of the class, okay? He is hated by mostly everybody. He's got a really horrible voice like me. He complains a lot and he thinks he's the best and he, like, bullies everybody around him, saying that they're stupid and they're not as smart as him and he's got the best robot and he's the smartest robotics person in the class. So, yeah, he's the bully. We'll talk about him later. He's not a nice person. Reed's friends are Shelly and Pickle, okay? Pickle's his nickname. Shelly and Pickle are brother and sister, um, and they're Reed's best friends, okay? So, the trio there, they've got a nice little trio in the class. Reed only took, uh, Reed only took robotics class to be with them as friends and stuff, and, uh, during robotics class, you see Julius having his exosuit. Uh, again, Google an exosuit, you'll see what I mean. It's not an animatronic suit, guys. It's not like a spring lock suit, which is why I said... Think of spring locks, but a little bit different. It's an exosuit, so there's no, like, cover or anything, like spring spring bonnie or anything. It's just literally, like... Think of spring trap, right, but without the hard shell over him, okay? Just the suit inside. That's what an exosuit is, okay? This is where things get interesting, okay? So, with all of the animatronics, well, the, the robotics, you have to use, like, a radio frequency, like a remote control car, right? Um, so you, you know, you got that lead, you pull up that, 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 um, that metal line and you 
use the RC car or something, or you use a robot or something to control it. Uh, interestingly, Pickles Remote, his remote control, was controlling Julius's exoskeleton, which is not supposed to happen, okay? So Pickles' frequency is affecting Julius's exoskeleton. So if Pickles uses his remote to walk forward or jump or whatever, the exoskeleton will do the same. Okay, you need to remember that, okay? Because that's a warning for later on. And with all that, guys, I had a really nice thought as well. Like, think about it. So, there was a remote control that could control the exoskeletons and, and the robotics in the classroom. I wonder if in the FNAF lore or anything in the video games, if that ever took place, if uh, somebody used a control to control one of the animatronics or something... Could they have been affected by radio frequency or a remote control? Have a think about that, because this, this story made me think a lot about that. Uh, maybe someone behind the scenes was, like, controlling them or something. Uh, but that's, you know, that's a bit wild. But, you know, something to think about. Got a little description about the exoskeleton, guys, if you guys want some more information about it. Let me give it a little read. Reed looked at the dangling metal foot of Julius's gangly exoskeleton, which hung off the right side of Julius's desk. Julius's project was a skeletal suit he intended to wear, a collection of metal frameworks attached to mechanical joints at the shoulders, elbows, hips and knees. Julius's exosuit had leather straps and metal clamps that he would hold the contraption in place on Julius's body. He had been bragging that it would make him even faster and stronger than he already was. So yeah guys, it's a big metallic suit and he can go inside and strap himself on and clamp himself on. And he can move around and, like, make him, you know, faster and stronger. Because, you know, he's got metal framework on him now. You've seen them in movies. And you've probably seen them on Google and stuff or on TV. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, hopefully. And again, uh, Pickles says that his remote is strong and can work through walls, okay? So, Pickles' remote control has a very, very strong signal, okay? Again, is this... I was reading through this. I was like, hold on a sec. Is this hinting that something's going to happen with the exo, uh, exoskeleton? At the end of class, guys, Julius, because he's so angry at Pickles' remote uh, affecting his exoskeleton, when Pickles is about to leave class, Julius trips him over, okay? And Pickles smashes his nose off the desk and he gets a nosebleed. So, uh, you know, Julius is not a nice person. And when this happens... Julius is laughing and, you know, laughing at, um, laughing at Pickles, being a really horrible bully. He doesn't go like, oh, sorry, like, I don't, I, I didn't want your nose to bleed. Like, he's not a nice person, guys, like, really, really nasty. You know, the typical movie bully, uh, where they actually cause harm to people physically. Uh, so he trips, uh, Pickles over, breaks his nose or, uh, bruises his nose, sorry, and then runs away. And... Julius uh, looks back at Reed and starts, like, giving him an evil grin, like, you know, I'm the boss around here. and Look what I've just done to your friend. Now, these are the only two in the class now. Everybody's left apart from Julius and Reed, okay? So they've got, like, a one-on-one -on -one confrontation with each other. And Julius just blabbers on about how Reed is stupid. He doesn't belong in this class. At least Pickles is smart, and at least Shelly is smarter than you. You don't belong in this class. You're stupid, you're ugly, uh, you know, you're disgusting. You don't belong here. Uh, and obviously, this starts to annoy Reed. He gets really angry. The Arthur meme of the fist, you know, angry, getting angry. And Julius is like, what are you going to do, hit me? Uh, Julius starts to give Reed a little bit of a presentation of his exoskeleton because Reed isn't very good at robotics. The creation he's made is terrible. No offence, Reed. Um, but Julius goes, look at my exoskeleton. You know, uh, look how fantastic it is. I'm such a smart person. Like, I'm the smartest person in this class. I'm going to put you in this exoskeleton. I'm going to strap you in. And I'm going to make you be a slave. And I'm going to make you dance like a monkey. 
Uh, I'm going to put you in the suit and I'm going to, like, trap you in there. And I'm going to use my remote to make you move around and dance like a, a monkey. That's what he says. Now, guys, this is where things take a really bad turn, okay? Julius, while talking about this, the exoskeleton, wants to show it off to Reed. He gets inside the exoskeleton, okay? He gets inside the exoskeleton. Julius... Heavy with the exoskeleton riding his body, leaned down and fiddled with the wires leading to the skeleton circuits. Reed wished he had the guts to reach out and shove Julius across the room, him and his stupid exoskeleton. But it was a good thing he didn't. A second later, Reed was glad he wasn't touching Julius. A radiant flash burst up like fireworks as a power surge sparked in the exoskeleton. Julius's body twitched, his eyes widened, and he went rigid for several seconds. And Reed looks down. So, yeah, basically there's a power surge, power surge in the exoskeleton and loads of flash and lightning and electrical uh, discharge and stuff. And Reed looks down at the exoskeleton and Julius looks knocked out. So Julius is knocked out from this happening. Reed blinked and studied Julius's inert form. Then Reed's gaze landed on the wrist and ankle joints of the suit. Finally, Reed moved. Stepping over to Julius, Reed quickly locked the wrist and ankle joints. They fitted together with a satisfying snick. As soon as they did, Reed stepped back and grinned. Reed picked up his backpack and slung it over his shoulder. He watched as Julius opened his eyes. It took a second for him to get oriented, but when he did, he attempted to strip off the exoskeleton. Oops, Reed said. He backed towards the classroom door. He finally found his voice. I must have locked you in. My bad. Julius jerked his arms, yanking to free them from the restraints of his skeletal suit. He kicked up his legs. With his right hand, he grabbed at the exoskeleton, hugging his left hand. He grunted and strained. The skeleton wouldn't budge. What the hell did you do, punk? Julius yelled. Unlock me! I don't think so, Reed said. Do what I tell you. Unlock me! Julius's face was a mottled mix of red and purple, and his eyes looked like they were bulging out of his head. Spittle clung to the corners of his mouth. Reed shrugged and grinned. He couldn't remember the last time he was this pleased with himself. Not that he had thought through what he was doing. What was the point of what he had just done? Was he just messing with Julius? Or was he going to leave Julius in the suit overnight? Could he do that? Why not? He'd get in trouble. That's why not. Julius would tell the teachers what Reed did. But all Reed would have had to do was deny it. So yeah, guys, Reed has trapped Julius inside the exoskeleton and he's debating whether to keep Julius in the suit overnight, which is a pretty long time and a very, very bad thing to do. So this is what Reed says. I'm going to do you a favor, Reed said, happy that he had something clever to say. I'm going to leave you here in your suit overnight so you can get the an idea of what it feels like to have someone treat you the way you've treated everyone else. Maybe your robot can teach you a thing or two. Reed leaves and leaves Julius there. And this is when Julius gets really angry and have a listen to what, what, what the kind of stuff he says. Do you know what you've done? I'm going to kill you. The last few words came out as a nearly unintelligible screech as Reed pulled the door closed. I'm going to rip your head off and flush it down the toilet. I'm going to tear you apart limb from limb. Get back in here and un unlock this. Come back here and let me out of this thing, Julius screamed. You can't leave me in here like this. So, yeah. You can see that Julius is angry. Angry with a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions. So, Reed leaves Julius to suffer. Because he feels like he deserves it. But I don't think anybody deserves that. <laughs> Whatever they've done. That is very, very harsh. Uh, so yeah, Reed, uh, Reed leaves and leaves Julius to be trapped in there all night. Uh, so he leaves. He goes to the bus stop. He goes into the bus. And this is where 
the breaking wheel title comes from, okay? So on the school bus, guys, uh, Shelly is reading a book about all of the torture uh, torture devices and stuff back in the olden days, okay? You know, like 500, 600 years ago. So on the bus at first, Shelly's just reading books and telling telling Reed what she's talking, like what she's reading. She talks about different torture devices of like cracking schools open and stuff like that. And while Shelly is telling Reed this, Reed is like, am I torturing Julius right now? What, what am I doing? So he's starting to question his actions, guys. Um, he, he, Reed's starting to really question about his actions, but Reed is considering, like, what he did was justice. But sometimes justice can lead to bad consequences uh, in the Fazbear Fright stories anyway, or in real life. Basically, Reed, Reed is just filled with too much anger. Uh, and, you know, anger against Julius that he thinks what he's done is justice, but it's not really justice. It's, um, you know, it's made Reed as bad as Julius, you know, locking him in an exoskeleton all night. You know, that's that's pretty bad. <laughs> but, you know, they're kids, so, you know, it's different, I guess. Uh, let me read you a little bit about what the breaking wheel is, guys. Now, this is the breaking wheel, okay? And again... When Shelly is reading this, Reed is going back to, like, thinking about Julius. Like, oh, what if I, have you know, gave Julius the breaking wheel, the wheel torch device? They called it that, she continued, because it was used to crush the bones of the condemned. The device was designed for torture, lasting over multiple days. The wheel was made up of many radial spokes, and the person subjected to it was tied to the whole wheel before a club or cudgel was used to beat their limbs. This process reduced the human being into a mutilated bag of bones. What are what one looker described it as a wreathing, moaning monster with bloody tentacles. It's basically foreshadowing, guys. You know, it's a Fazbear Fright story. It's foreshadowing what's going to happen. Uh, but, you know, that's when I was like, hold on a sec. She's talking about torture devices and stuff. Something bad's going to happen to Julius. Especially when he's in, like, an exoskeleton, like, suit. <laughs> and this is making Reed, like, think more and more about what he's doing. Like, hold on. You know, what I'm doing is pretty bad. Am I torturing Julius right now? I think he's learned his lesson by now. I should go back later on when I get back home. So, yeah, Reed, Reed has realised already... That is screwed up and he needs to go back soon uh, to see if Julius is okay. So then, guys, uh, Reed, Shelly and Pickles go back to... They go to Shelly's uh, parents' house. Uh, you know, they have a lot of food there and they're going to have, like, a little study for homework with loads of food because their parents spoil them. A little bit of backstory about Reed, by the way. Um, he, he doesn't have a mom. He's only got a dad and... Uh, his dad doesn't really cook or anything, so he doesn't really eat a lot at home. Um, so, again, another character that doesn't have a family member, uh, like a mom or a dad. So, yeah. Now, remember the remote control? Oh, dear. You remember how Pickle's remote control can affect the exoskeleton, right? This is when uh, Reed starts to, you know, think, like, hold on. So, Pickles and Shelly have a little brother called Ori. Um, uh, he's like six years old or something. Uh, he, Pickles lets him play with the remote robot. The little robot is really, really cool and smart. He can like climb walls and drive around and like run around and do crawl and stuff. Really, really awesome. Uh, he gives the remote control to Ori and Ori starts playing with it and just going around the house in it, okay? But now he remembered Reed. Julius had been complaining that Pickle's remote was affecting Julius's exoskeleton, and Julius was now locked into that metal frame, his body inexcruciably linked with its structure, and therefore inexcruciably, I can't say that, linked with its movement. What if it had crashed into something the way Pickle's robot had just crashed into the half? What if it was spinning in circles right now? So, yeah, the robot's going all over the place, hitting walls, 
hitting the fireplace. And Reed at the back of his head is thinking, hold on. What if the exact same thing is happening to Julius right now back at the classroom? And Reed does ask Pickle about the, you know, the, the distance the radio frequency can work. And Pickle says that it, it, it's, it, it shouldn't be that far. It doesn't, it, by the way, Reed never mentions what he's done to Julius to his friends, okay? Not once. So when Reed asks about the radio frequency, he doesn't mention Julius or anything. He just asks, like, how far, how far do you think your remote control could go? Uh, and Pickles just says, like, not that far, especially with the walls. Uh, he can do, like, one wall, but nothing, like, from his house to the school. Uh, but Reed's still worrying, so he's just watching the robotic skeleton racing through the room in dizzying serpentine routes around the furniture. Reed tried not to imagine Julius zipping around the robotics classroom in a similar fashion. If he was doing in... If he was doing in his suit what Pickle's robot was doing here, Julius would be bashed into walls and furniture. He'd be at least badly bruised, more likely. He'd be badly bruised, but more likely, he'd have broken bones. Oh man, Reed thought. I might be torturing Julius. So yeah, uh, throughout all this time and process, guys, Reed really needs to, you know, check on Julius and... Uh, the robot is still roaming around the room, hitting walls and stuff. And any time it gets, like, it hits, the robot makes any noises. He imagines the noises of Julius's bones being broken and cracked and, you know, getting crushed by the exoskeleton. And Reed now really thinks that something's going on. Uh, he's, like, a little bit of him is, like, he's going insane. And a little bit of him is, like, I've got a feeling like something's really, something really bad is happening to Julius right now. Reed can't handle it, and he really needs to get back to the school. So he tries to make, a, make up an excuse, uh, but he can't. Like, he can't, he can't figure out what he can do. He, he doesn't want to tell them. Um, and interestingly, now things get really, really deep, okay? Now, this is where I was like, oh, damn. Because I thought Julius was going to go to the school and see what happened to Julius. But now, guys, okay... When the little robot in the room starts hitting the walls in the house, a bigger FUD outside is hitting the wall of the house as well. Okay? So, you know, you got, like, the robot, like, hitting the walls like this. Or whatever. And then, while that's happening at the same time, you've got the FUD. FUD outside the house as well. Uh, so, yeah, what do you guys think that is? I don't know. Weirdly, though, only Reed was hearing all these noises from outside. Uh, Pickles and Shelly and Ori weren't taking any notice of it. So, again, Reed thinks that he's going insane and that he's imagining it. But, again, the robot hits the wall and something hits the house again with a big FUD. And then, guys, because this robot's so cool and amazing it can crawl on walls so when the robot in the house in the room when all is controlling the remote control he makes the robot climb the wall climb up the wall and then reed can hear something outside climbing up the house okay so you guys are getting the idea of what's happening here so yeah little robot in the room being controlled climbs up the wall something outside Reed hears climbing up the wall. Reed says to Shelly and uh, Pickles, like, hey, uh, can I go upstairs to check out any books that you've got? I'd like to read a book tonight. Uh, so he goes upstairs alone to secretly investigate if anything's outside the house, okay? The motion sensor outside comes on uh, in the garden. Um, so Reed definitely thinks something's outside, but... He can't hear any movement at all. He can't hear anything. Um, and while he's looking around the room and looking outside, see if anything's there, Pickle, Shelly and Ori leave to go and get a soda at one of the stores at, uh, down the street. Okay? Bad move. When I, heard, when I read this, when I saw that Pickle, Shelly and Ori left the house, leaving Reed alone... It's a classic horror cliche. Uh, 
Reed's alone. Something bad is going to happen, right? He's left alone now. So while that while they've left, guys, uh, Reed keeps looking around the rooms, uh, checks outside each window, looks down at the back garden, the backyard, and nothing was outside at this point. Nothing is outside, so it seems safe. Nothing's crawling along the walls. There's no noises or anything. There's no bumps in the dark. Uh, nothing's there, apparently. So Reed thinks he's safe now. You know, it was windy outside, apparently. So probably just the wind blowing the trees and stuff. Maybe some branches were hit, hitting the house, but that's about it. So Reed's like, okay, I'm just imagining this. I'm going insane. I need to go. I need to go and, you know, find Julius at the school uh, to figure things out and see that he's okay. So he goes back into the room where they were all hanging out, obviously alone now. And he looks around the room, and the remote control is in the room, okay? It's not being used now. Think about that for a second. The remote control isn't being used now, and it's in the room. So, if Julius is at the school, uh, nothing bad's happening, happening to him anymore because the remote's not being used, okay? But interestingly, the robot wasn't in sight. The robot wasn't around. The robot was nowhere to be seen. In, in the little robot so in the room the living room guys where they all hang out there is like a big model of a family house the house where they live you know like a little doll house it's very very big okay aha that's where the little robot went it was inside the miniature house behind the miniature house reed started to reach into the miniature house to rescue the robot before he could get a hand in through the front door though a little robotic skeleton raised up off the floor of the house. Reed jumped, then started to shake his head at his edginess. So, in the dollhouse, guys, the little robot is in the living room, okay? In the dollhouse, guys, there's an even miniature house in the, in the room that he's in, okay? Does that make sense? So, it's just a fully modelled version of the house that he's in right now. Uh, with all the details, including the little dollhouse. So, the little robot, what Ori's been playing around with in the room, is behind that little dollhouse in the model house, okay? So, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, the little robot has stood up, and that's when Julius sprang up from behind the model house. Because the, the little robot and... Julius have the same frequency. They're basically the same robot together, okay? So that's why the little robot was behind the little house and then Julius was behind the bigger house, okay? Reed scrambled backwards, screaming. In his mind, he called what he was seeing Julius because his vivid imagination had prepared him to see the boy the way he looked now. But Julius didn't look a thing like Julius. He was, in fact, exactly what Reed's mind had known Julius would be. Now, nothing more than a fleshy, octopus-like mass of pulpy limbs attached to a metal frame. Julius could no longer be called a boy. He couldn't even be called human. Reed wasn't even sure Julius was alive. Yes, Julius moved, but Reed didn't know if that was Julius initiating the movements or if his corpse was just being controlled by the metal framework latched onto Julius like a loathsome external parasite. Julius's face was slack, so there was no life there. It was slack because it looked like the bone structure of his forehead, cheeks and jaw had been pulverised. His features were so distorted, he resembled some kind of crudely sewn cloth version of himself, no longer framed by wavy blonde hair, because that hair was now sticky and stringy with congealed blood. Julius's face was like a repulsive doll's face, a doll much worse than Alexa's baby doll with the staring black eyes. Julius's eyes were a thousand times more disconcerting than empty black ones. His eyes had rolled back in his head, so all that was showing was the whites. The murky, cloudy whites. Those ghostly whites made him look like a sightless zombie. But 
like a zombie, Julius, alive or not, was moving. He was moving determinedly towards Reed. So I think the author uh, wanted to imply that the exoskeleton is now controlling himself, okay? Because the remote control is still in the room. So who's controlling it? Nobody. Um, this made me think that, you know, th you know, the Fazbear Frights story, right? Julius has been killed inside the exoskeleton, okay? When Ori reads, reads was right, Ori was playing with the remote control in the room and the signal was so strong, it was controlling Julius as well. And obviously Julius was trapped in the exoskeleton. So when uh, Ori was moving the little robot around the house, hitting walls, climbing walls, smashing it on the floor and stuff like that, the same thing was happening to Julius. So you can imagine the exoskeleton bars and pins every time he hit a wall and stuff were basically completely crushing his face and body and limbs. So that's why I said it's kind of like a spring lock failure, but completely different. Um, where, like, it, it wasn't really like the, the any spring locks inside the... There's no spring locks inside the exoskeleton, but there were, like, bars and stuff, right, on the exoskeleton. So when Ori was bashing it on the walls and stuff, the bars were basically stabbing and impaling Julius while inside the exoskeleton. So obviously, Reed needs to escape. He's alone with this big dying inside Julius exoskeleton. So Reed needs Reed needs to get the hell out of there. So he tries to think what to do. He tries to think what to do. He tries to think, oh, can I get through the window? Uh, can I get, escape through the door? But unfortunately, Julius, because he's in the exoskeleton, the exo, it's an exoskeleton, guys. It's not a human. Okay, so wherever Reed tries to run to, the exoskeleton jumps in front of him and blocks his path. Okay, he's too quick. The exoskeleton's way too quick for Reed. Okay, Reed cannot escape. Turning, Reed ran towards the entryway. The Julius thing scuttled out from behind the miniature house and tumbled across the floor after him. Reed tore through the archway, rounding the corner and heading to the front door. Before he could get there, though, Julius sprang to the ceiling and skittered past Reed to block his way to the front door. Julius is too quick for him. He can jump on ceilings, crawl on ceilings. Think of like Ballora or something, how Ballora can like be a spider. Uh, creepy, right? Really, really creepy scene. I mean, you can imagine like just Julius's dead body, not even moving or talking, just like that in, inside the exoskeleton while the exoskeleton's doing everything. Very, very dark. Um, so, Reed tries to think of an idea. He decides to go to Pickle's room and try and find something to try and, like, you know, um, make the exoskeleton haywire and glitch and, like, stop working. So, he goes up to Pickle's room. He can't really find anything, but he finds a microscope uh, to try and hit him. To just, you know, just anything, anything for defense, right? But Julius isn't there anymore. He's gone. Reed looked around desperately. Where did Julius go? Reed looked up. The Julius abomination dropped off the ceiling and landed on Reed before Reed could swing the microscope again. The impacts knocked the microscope from Reed's hand. It tumbled across the room as Reed screamed and tried to squirm out from under the horrendous combination of hard and sharp metal and squishy clammy destroyed body parts at the same time he had to hold his hold his breath because the julius thing smelled dreadful it smelled like blood putrid flesh and stale sweat it was dripping on reed too julius's flesh and his no longer stylish clothing perforated by puncture wounds caused by jutting cracked bones was smeared with dried blood and his body still seeped fresh blood too. And Reed tries to escape. Um, and he tries to escape through the window. Um, but unfortunately, Julius grabs his foot. And he's got a really good lock on him now with the exoskeleton. Julius is way too strong. And read this. This is FNAF, right? This is FNAF with all the agony and emotions. Julius was now powered by a robotic framework. A mere human couldn't defeat. 
especially if that mere human was Reed. Plus, Julius now seemed to be supercharged by the monstrosity that he had become. And that monstrosity had been born of the kind of emotions that propelled humans past their usual limitations. Emotions like pain and fear. Emotions like rage. Julius's rage was more powerful than Reed's guilt. Reed didn't stand a chance. So yeah, guys, it's all about emotion. So what I think what, what's happened, guys, is that uh, Julius was killed in the exoskeleton, but because it's FNAF, right? Um, Julius's rage and agony and anger has made the exoskeleton come alive and it wants revenge and it wants to kill Reed. That's basically it. Before Reed could take a step though, Julius was on him again. This time, Julius fell fully onto Reed and they both went down on Pickle's bed. Reed was pinned under Julius's hideous remains and the metal frame strapped to them. Reed inhaled Julius' stench and gagged. Even as he gagged, he cried out, Help! Whose help was he calling for? No one else was in the house. Were the neighbours here? Reed's face was just inches from Julius's lifeless eyes and sagging mouth. Gagging again and whimpering, Reed turned his face away from the horror above him. So guys, now Reed is now trapped, okay? He's trapped inside the metal framework with Julius, okay? You can imagine basically, Reed's pinned down by the exoskeleton and all the exoskeleton straps and stuff, like the framework, has now connected to Reed's arms and legs and stuff, okay? And again, here's something interesting to do with the agony. Maybe the interference of Pickle's remote had so badly fried the exoskeleton systems that it was wildly functioning on its own now, okay? So even Reed thinks like this isn't remote controlled now, something's controlling this, and it's definitely Julius and his rage and his emotions, I'm pretty sure. Okay, guys. Now, here we go. This is the ending. Are you ready? I'm going to read it. Mesmerized now by the whites of Julius's eyes bulging out from between long blonde lashes, Reed couldn't turn away from the malformed thing above him, but he still struggled. Grunting, he shoved upwards with all his might. It did no good. It was like the weight of a hundred cars pinned him down. Please, please, Reed whispered. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I didn't know this was going to happen to you. I just wanted you to be locked in overnight. I didn't want this to happen. He knew there was no use in begging, but he couldn't help himself. He opened his mouth to say something else. But that's when the question of whether Julius's consciousness was answered. Julius shifted downward to press his heavy, seeping mass against Reed's mouth. Reed could no longer speak, but he could hear. In the distance downstairs, the other kids were returning from their soda run. Reed could hear Pickle suggesting to Shelley that he could construct a better torture device than anything medieval people had come up with. I'm not sure that would be an accomplishment, Pickle, Shelley said. Reed strained, grunting, desperate to get their attention. Trying to yell, Reed could only make unintelligible groans. Downstairs, Ori piped up. Can I play with the remote again, Pickle? Julius shifted, and Reed allowed himself a moment of hope. Maybe he could get away. Pouring every bit of life force he had into his muscles, he surged upwards. He hoped to erupt like a volcano and get ejected away from Julius towards freedom. But he didn't erupt. Or rather, he did. But before he could get ejected away, from the Julius cage that imprisoned him. Julius's mashed hands somehow grabbed hold of Reed's outstretched hands. Julius's formless legs somehow managed to wrap tightly around Reed's ankles. Reed was now as linked to Julius as Julius was to his exoskeleton. What was going to happen next? With the pressure of Julius's face wedged against Reed's throat, Reed couldn't make a sound that could be heard downstairs. He was facing his worst nightmare and he couldn't, he couldn't scream. Downstairs, Pickle responded 
to his brother's question. Sure, Ori. Go nuts. We have all night. Pressing a button, Ori got the little robot to crawl out from behind the miniature house. He carefully manoeuvred the robot out of the miniature house, not wanting to get on his sister's bad side. One time, he ran the little skeleton into a wall. When he did, he heard something bump on the floor above his head. He looked up, but he didn't hear anything else, so he continued carefully, guiding the robot out of the house and onto the miniature porch. When he got out, he did a little fist bump. Happy with himself, Ori grinned wider and decided to see if he could get the robot to do even weirder things than it was doing before he got his soda. He began manipulating the robot so fast his fingers were just a big blur. In response, the little robot shot off the toy's house's porch and began spinning and thrashing. While Ori shouted in triumph, the little robotic skeleton began popping and snapping its metal limbs in all kinds of unnaturally delightful ways. So guys, we don't know what happens with Reed, but it's clearly obvious that he's dead, okay? Julius and Reed connect, okay? So Reed's pinned down with the exoskeleton. The exoskeleton attaches himself to him. So now think of the exoskeleton both sides, okay? Uh, both entry entries to go in. Um, Reed's on one side and Julius is on the other side, okay? And Reed is now trapped, okay, inside the exoskeleton, pinned down uh, with the bolts on him and stuff and everything, just like Julius, okay? So when Ori is fiddling around with the remote, what do you think's happened? So the exoskeleton's thrashing around now, so, and popping around even worse than what happened to Julius. So Reed's dead. Uh, Reed. Uh, Reed does die inside the exoskeleton as well. It's not said, but it's pretty obvious. The ending, how it says the delightful ways the robot's dancing around and popping and snapping. It's clearly obvious that Reed's just been completely mauled by the exoskeleton as well, with Julius inside dead too. So there you go. We don't know what happens next. We don't know if the exoskeleton leaves the house and runs away, uh, because now it's got its mind of its own, because it's run by agony. Uh, we don't know if the family go upstairs to see what's happened. We don't know. Okay, it's left on a cliffhanger. Maybe we'll see what happens in, in the Stitch Drive story later on. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed that story. Unfortunately, it was a bad ending. Um, but you know, it's a FNAF story. So it usually happens, right? It's very rare we get a good ending where, you know, the ending is good, right? This is a bad ending, clearly. Um, still though, if you always think with the Fazbear Fright stories, it, there's always like a moral to it. Sometimes it's not the best way to get justice by, uh, you know, tor literally torturing someone or, you know, being horrible to someone or making them suffer, okay? Sometimes that's not the right way to do justice, okay? And at the end of the day, Julius was just a bully. Uh, you know, what Reed did was harsh, but he realised that, okay? Reed wouldn't know, okay? I don't think anybody would think, like, you know, the exoskeleton would kill somebody. Uh, you know, it's just a mistake. And Reed did think that, like, going home, he was like, hold on, I'm not going to leave him overnight. I'm going to check up on him and let him go later on. But unfortunately, it was too late. So, Ori was playing with the exo exoskeleton remote, killing Julius, and because of the signal... Um, it brings the exoskeleton all the way to the house uh, because it's connected with the little robot as well. Okay, so whatever the little robot does, the exoskeleton does as well. And the remote control works uh, and killing Julius at the school. But when Julius gets killed, okay, uh, that's pretty sure to me the point when Julius's rage and agony gets transferred into the exoskeleton. Uh, powering it up and, you know, making it like, a, you know, a fast bear fright story. So the exoskeleton makes its way to the house to kill Reed. Um, and it happens, okay? So, yeah. 
really, really gory, gruesome description of what happened to Julius. Like, you can't even see his face. It's so distorted and mashed up by the by the uh, the framework of the exoskeleton. And then you can imagine what happened to Reed as well. And um, when... Oh, when Reed... Uh, when Ori was controlling the robot at the end and it was like, you know contracting and folding up and stuff and that that's what the exoskeleton would have done as well the exoskeleton would have folded up and hit itself on the walls and stuff and you know folded itself in so yeah reed's dead man reed's dead <laughs> but yeah let me know your thoughts on that story guys i did enjoy it i did enjoy it and that ending man that could make a really cool like um adaptation on a, a netflix uh one uh i really enjoyed that you can see that being like a Goosebumps, uh, a Goosebumps movie or short story film, right? Uh, compared to some of the other ones that we've read. Really enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on it, guys, okay? Any theories? It could just be like um, a tiny, tiny link to like a Springlock suit, Springlock failure. Yeah. But I don't really think it's got any connections to the FNAF story. The only thing I did think about briefly was like radio control. If somebody could radio control the animatronics in the FNAF pizzeria or something. That's basically it. Okay. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And it's left on a cliffhanger. But we kind of know what's happened. So I count the ways, right? Count the ways. Like left it on a cliffhanger with Millie. Getting, uh, you know, getting cut by the the um, the guillotine. Um, but it, it kind of hints that she is dead. It's like the same with this. But I think this is a bit more obvious that he's dead so yeah let me know your thoughts on the breaking wheel okay the next story is apparently mixed it's called he told me everything basically apparently about like freddy fazbear goo or something like a science kit and yeah something like that so that's going to be interesting lots of love guys thanks for watching and once again a thank you wackery for the illustrations really do appreciate it make sure you check her out uh, she's also working on Hex with me too. It's, I'm really excited for Hex. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you all next week, guys, where I'll do He Told Me Everything. It's a bit shorter, so I'll get it done. Lots of love, thanks for watching, and the Stitch Rife part as well. And I'll see you all next time.